everyone welcome to day 22 we're going to continue with these floral rosettes for this spread and I have already gone ahead and illustrated the main flower now I go step by step in day 21 so if you haven't seen that please refer to day 21 and you will see what to do it's very simple you just draw out a wonky kind of a circle shape and then you repeat the same smaller shape inside the bigger shape you then add lines from the outer circle to the inner and fill in the fine lines as well as adding a center if you wish or doing your own thing or equally you could use this element from the botanical set and just stamp it in the middle that also would be fine or instead of drawing a circle you could also stamp one of these flowers in the center and then you would have that covered so the center and the wonky shape as well so that's something you can try today i'm going to use a few stamp sets i already pre-stamped the swatches as I always do and I used the palette swatches set and this strip here which has 13 areas or spots for your color mixes or color swatches and then I'm going to use a few other things from the summer florals and also the floral set this was the very first set and this is going to be for those of you who managed to get it and this was a long time ago so you will enjoy playing with it today and for those of you who haven't got it you can just replace any of the elements that i'm going to be using from the other stamp sets which is the botanicals and summer florals in terms of smaller flowers you probably would be better off with summer florals because it has quite a few of them the botanical set has more individual items like petals and leaves to build your own compositions if you haven't seen the videos that i've done for the first spread and how you can use those stamp sets in a multitude of different ways then do have a look and i think you will enjoy it okay so let's start by adding a couple of things so i'm going to use this element from the summer florals now i'm going to go to the floral set and use this rosebud right here instead of the rosebud you could use the summer florals element like this little flower here for example that would be a good substitute from the summer florals i'm going to use this leaf as well the leaf will give us length to the composition and we kind of have a more tilted composition this time so not going straight down but more on the right and kind of going in a curved shape now we're going to take our zero one and line everything out. Now let's play with some watercolor. So I have used only two colors in the previous illustration. I'm thinking of the same thing here, but let's see, it might be a little bit too adventurous. So I'll start with this gorgeous orange and I think I may use third color as well. So let's see how we can make it work. I'm gonna start with a very, very kind of almost too bright here on the rosebud and then making it slightly lighter I'm going to go into the flower
going to intensify it just on the edge and now adding a bit of water maintaining some of the white of the paper I'm going to wash out my brush entirely it's going to make the water flow towards the center now I'm going to go back into this color and a bit of very very thick mixture I'm going to layer it onto that rosebud so that it almost pops up more than the flower itself. As a contrasting color I am thinking of a turquoise and I'm going to use my cobalt teal. So this is from my ultimate palette, these are handmade watercolors. Just go ahead and add this turquoise to all of the flowers. Now we're going to see what kind of color we can mix because we're aiming for a green. There is quite a muted version that we can get. And I think this muted version is going to go into the base of the flower. Cobalt teal is a very fun color to mix with because it does pigment separate, it does granulate. You just need to know how to get it to do it. In this case, we're going to take our brush, dip it in the water and just dab a little drop here and there. And that will start pushing the color apart, separating the pigment particles and you will get that beautiful granulation. To this, actually, I'm going to add the third color, which is my chartreuse. And I want to kind of bring some zest to my mixture. So I'm going to add it straight into this mix right here. It's a very beautiful zesty green. Again, because it has cobalt teal in there, it will separate. Let me just add a little bit of this orange in there. And now we're going to add a bit more chartreuse and add that into the flower bud. like so. I'm also going to go over this color and glaze it and that way we're going to bring some brightness to it and I'm also going to glaze these areas here to lift it and bring some more brightness and vibrancy. So we still have that base of the color come through from underneath but we're just adding a little bit more interest and same thing I'm going to just dab some water in all of these areas to get the cobalt to move again so now I want to add a few details to the illustration so I'm going to take my zero one liner and just elongate the flowers by adding a few of these denty and super fine stamen. Now I want to actually add a little bit of yellow into this orange and lift things slightly. So we're going to go into this beautiful orange and then add a bit of yellow. and glaze it on top.
bring it a bit more into the center and you can see the yellow is now a lot brighter and warmer and we can actually just go straight into the yellow without mixing it in and just dabbing it into some of these areas for that extra bit of sunshine we can also take the yellow and glaze over these small leaves right here and I'm going to do the same over these elongated leaves you can do it as many times as you want until you get to the right tone that you are happy with so now I'm going to add a few of those colors to our swatches so I'll start with the lightest and that was the yellow then we went ahead into the orange the zesty green and a turquoise So those were the four colors we have used and then you of course can sort of mix them and see what kind of colors you could get and as you do that you can just swatch them out um, and play around with it. Use this time to learn more about your colors and watercolor in general. So I, for example, don't like to mix or swatch colors that are not attractive. So I'm just going to swatch the colors that I think look good and stay away from the muddier mixes. Even if I didn't use these exact mixes in the illustration, I can just learn about it for next time. And for example, this green that I just mixed up, I'm gonna add in here. And maybe a bit more yellow into this final mix. I'm actually going to go in with my chartreuse just on its own and just layer it over these leaves here i think i will stop at that it looks actually quite pretty but i just am over complicating and kind of over analyzing things at this point so i will leave it at this okay we're done with day 22 Let's give you a nice little close-up. I really like the color contrast of the orange and the turquoise. And I feel like today I just spent a little bit too long trying to perfect the colors. And perhaps going forward I won't limit myself to just two colors. Maybe that's just a little too challenging and just see how I feel and use the colors accordingly. Although I do like to minimize the colors to a very limited color palette but we'll see how we get on. So I hope you enjoyed this illustration today. It is simpler than what we did before but i think there is still enough detail and it's really really cute thank you for watching and i will see you day 23